These are the necessary sacrifices we need to make to humiliate United from time to time. Why would Slot do the same lineup again for the third game running, especially when you know that these guys have played so much and especially when you know that there's a Champions League game coming up? That is absolutely and utterly fucking blah blah blah. <laughs> wow, Dwergers with a pony <laughs> Yeah, but not now, bro. We do it now. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> not then. We do it now. No. <laughs> this is this is a shocker, man. This is the shocker of the game week. Did not expect this at all. All of us had Salah captain. Yeah, yeah. No. Liverpool nil. Uh, Nottingham Forest won. I'm just gonna straight up go into the review. <laughs> First three games <laughs> today. <laughs> I, I, what, I what don't even know who the guy on the right is, but anyway, my thoughts. <laughs> then you, I think this you is haven't watched harshest. cartoons, bro. <laughs> I don't know this cartoon. I guess I don't know. Anyway, uh, I think this is the harshest reality check you can get. Harshest welcome to Premier League you can get for any new manager. So I think the first couple of games and even the United game, we kind of overachieved a bit, especially given everything with the squad and with the new manager and all of that. And because I was expecting there'll be some some time to settle in, you know, maybe just kind of feel out what the Premier League is because. Ipswich were very good in the championship and if the first game away to a to a duty promoted team we thought we'll struggle a bit given that we didn't have we didn't buy any players and all of that. But somehow we kind of got through it and then same was against Brentford and United. I don't you know, I, I can talk about it for hours and hours, but it's okay. United, we did what we did. But I think this is basically where we did not have when when after coming up after we had the break, we did not have anyone clicking in the field and that is basically due to the international break and it's even the small passes which Salah does 99 times out of 100 all of those were missing Salah and Sobosla they were very bad uh, in the final third and the substitutions were not good I mean we were getting progressively worse after the substitutions as well and I think again as I said it's it's a big wake-up call for slot it this is basically what Premier League is you can't kind of take anyone for granted and he kind of as, as, as AJ was saying I think he kind of did something of that sort in his press conference where he said, okay, it's which don't finish in top 10 or something like that. That's bullshit. Should not say that. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a good wake-up call. I mean, I'm glad it happened right now, uh, but not maybe sometime later, but okay. I'm just saying that it looks like it was a quite a nothing game and uh, yeah. Nottingham Forest like probably like made it that way. Yeah, one one of you boys, the, did you guys see the game, Vamsi Aram? I watched the game because I had Salah <laughs> It was annoying as fuck to watch the game. But, you know, to Abhinav's previous point, right, he set up very similarly, similarly to how he set up against United. And that, mm-hmm. that set up against United was not perfect. United had some really good chances. Their finishing was just ass on the game. Mm-hmm. So, they got some free chances again on the counter-attack here. Uh, Nottingham Forest and dude uh, CHO what a fucking finish that was sort of sad that was you know like it's super unlucky like it hit the post like inside of the post uh, this could have been a nil all game but uh, CHO man I think you can ask Aram to, to chip in on do you have a buyback buy buy clause <laughs> Um, no, we have a sell on clause, but seeing that performance, I think Bolly is looking at that. Oh, that's, a, that, that's a youngster that's performing, yeah. Let's buy this guy. Who's this dude? We don't even know him, but let's buy him. Yeah. 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 And I think uh, even our XG, right? Like, I think Adoi, even if you look at the Adoi game. Of, Sorry, go ahead. I was saying Adoi is one of those players that was like one of my personal favorites. I loved him coming through the ranks in the academy, and he was the one guy. Used to say that he is our Sancho. Like Sancho was at City's Academy at that time while Odon was playing for us. And I was saying, like, this is the guy who would be better than Jaden Sancho from the time. But I think injuries and everything, he lost his pace and then didn't perform well. The loan that he had in Germany. So I think all of those factors contributed to him leaving Chelsea eventually for nothing. But really happy for him that he's finding his feet and performing well because he does the do it. Alright, um, explain, riddle me this, uh, Avinav. <laughs> Why? <Bye>. These, <laughs> these are the necessary sacrifices we need to make to humiliate United from time to time. I mean, if it's, if it, if a humiliation for United is guaranteed after of the fact that you know, we lose a home game or an away game, that's fine. A 7-0-3-0 is totally, totally doable. But it just kind of shows you, right, how inconsistent, how 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 mind-numbingly painful it is to kind of get go from that high of, you know, beating United 7-0-3-0 and then losing to Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest. It's, it's I don't know, man. 
I don't know. I don't know how you can make sense of it. This one, at least, I can I can say, okay, it's a new manager. Okay, we you know we're settling in, sort of. It's not at a transition season, but the seven zero you beat United. I mean, I know it was a bit fluky. At least two or three goals in the seven zero were not supposed to go in, but they did. But losing to Burnley right after, it's just bad. And yeah, I mean, I think if you want to, we pull before international break and after international break. Jesus Christ! I mean, the thing I is. Mean, it- yeah. If, if it would be once, interesting one... to see how many Liverpool players actually go to international breaks like, compared to other teams, right? That kind so, of a statistic, or like where yeah. they go if they have more players outside of Europe, like they, you know they have what do you call whatever you call Diaz, whatever his mm-hmm. big name is. He goes to all the way to South America. Uh, yeah. Nunez goes all the way to South America. Salah goes all the way to Asia. So th- maybe that's a factor. I don't know. No, exactly. No, but this this Liverpool. I mean, this international break, Salah didn't go anywhere. Nunes was banned. Jota oh, yes. maybe played one or two game matches. That was in Europe. Lucho played. Okay, fine. McAllister was injured for the last second game. He only played one game against Argentina uh, for Argentina. And uh, Gra- Gravenberch played, and he was in good form, and he actually played performed well. I mean, what I don't understand is why would Slot do the same lineup again? For the third game running, especially when you know that these guys have played so much, and especially when you know that there's a Champions League game coming up, you know there'll be some lethargy, there'll be people settling in, and all of that. Why would you do what you do and not just give a chance for other players because you have Curtis Jones, you have all these players yeah. coming in? So at least like start Gakpo, start someone else, right? At least you know with Nottingham Forest, you know it's in your own words, it's it's not a top ten team. So why don't you give chance to the other you know fringe players? Yeah, true. I'm right. curious uh, when are we gonna see yeah. Kiesa, don't he? I don't think he played on that. He's not yeah, getting I, the Italy call up anymore. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. I, I mean, I think his general match fitness, and I think he's still kind of doing this in, in you know, going through trainings and motions, I guess. But you know, maybe in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, but I think if Salah performs the same way, I think we'll see him much sooner. Right now, he's. Uh, he's Do you think he was a panic buy? Uh, no, it was an opportunistic buy. I mean, panic? No, not really, because we don't need uh, reinforcements in. I mean, opportunistic attack. buys happen when you already bought many players. When you have exactly. bought nothing, then that is called. <laughs> panic but <laughs> No, you can yeah. okay. You can say it's a panic buy because we haven't bought any defenders or midfielders. I get that, but we don't need uh, reinforcements in attack as much as we do in midfield and defense. Right. I mean, it's a uh, right. you know, 12 million, 10 million pounds. I don't know. I think he's still on the same wages. And I guess I think it's it's a good buy. Uh, I don't think it's panic, but it's not needed. Right. But we bought him, so might as well use him. Right. See how I basically cool. do talking about the midfield signing, so I can <laughs> brag about Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo, Lavia. Oh, how are you guys doing? Talking about, <laughs> how are you guys still talking about LFC midfield, man? How? Oh, Zubi. What? Zubi, Zubi, Oh my god! But I think I think yeah, I just said I think. Who are you? <laughs> Who's that guy? I, I, okay. Anyway, so I think not buying a midfield replacement, not Zubi Mendy or whoever, right? I think we are going to run McAllister and suppose like to the ground by December, especially with this Champions League and all of these fixtures. And I think that's going to bite slot in the back or Liverpool yeah. back stuff in the back. The more the more Sobosly plays, the more minutes he plays, the more he looks into the camera, the more his neck <laughs> neck gets stressed, the more like you know. He he might just he might have no neck soon. But I think and that's my. I mean, which he has he's to like kind of underwhelming, man. Suppose like I mean, what I expected from him when we signed last season, he is he's, he's not even shooting properly. He's he's not even making any any of those things. He missed a sitter against right. United. He missed a shot against Don't worry. Not there, are, Forest. there are some there are some tweets criticizing your players. Don't worry, we're getting okay. there. Okay. Oh uh, my god. My, fuck's one, sake. One of up uh, one of AJ's favorite uh, uh, Twitter accounts. No new things. He's a he's a subscriber. Driver for life um, said that Liverpool have genuinely wasted two potential seasons to win the title because they couldn't find a top holding midfielder, not even for a double pivot. A big shame. And uh, life of Brian says Liverpool paid 100 million for Darwin Nunez. The media is insanely quiet for the fact that he's absolutely and utterly fucking blah blah blah. <laughs> wow, to a curse with a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> Curiously quiet, in fact. Uh, for I'm gonna go to Aram this first. Uh, what good. do you think about Liverpool's lack of holding midfielders? Yep, I think whatever player they try to buy, Chelsea's like, okay, we need this guy. I'm the guy says, fuck Liverpool, I'm going to Chelsea. So I think, <laughs> I think Liverpool don't, would don't, be quite. Don't happy sleep on Aram now. making everything about Chelsea. <laughs> A simple question. <laughs> Challenge yeah. to Arham to not no. make everything about Chelsea. No, but I think like Zubi Mendy would have been a top back for them. The, I don't see that for them, but like it was back for them. They got to get the idea or they could feel it. So if they got Zubi Mendy, they must be good after them. 
is the kind of profile that they actually need right now. So, but I like the second tweet more like about the double winner and let's make it about Chelsea because like Nico Jackson is so shitted upon in the media and he just cost I think less than one third of this and he performs way better week in week out. And Darwin Nunes, I don't know if he escapes the criticism, but it is what it is, man. Like wow, we go to the ponytail, forget, dude. Uh, this guy named him. <laughs> I will never forget uh, or forgive me and AJ for getting insanely excited when Darwin to Arsenal <laughs> all that game was going on I can't believe we were so st- we were starving bro we were starving but uh, yeah your thoughts on Darwin Nabinav like his progress to Liverpool I have exhausted my thoughts patience any, everything about Darwin Nunes there is nothing to think about the guy does what he wants to do he is not someone who you can count on to do anything I mean even yesterday man I think it was, it was he was he got he was introduced like when 68th minute or so it's like okay Darwin this is your time like you've been you've not been starting the last three games you came off you got a good international break and I think you've settled in right now at least go now and prove and do something nothing there was nothing he proved there's nothing he kind of offered for the team in the final third he was not linking up with Sobazlai or Salah so I mean at this point of time it's just a matter of I don't know everyone's kind of lost patience but Nunes is not going to be that striker for a team who wants to win Champions League or Premier League he, he'll be a good enough striker backup striker for someone who wants to be in top four which I think is what Liverpool is kind of looking for right now at least this season so that's probably why they kept him but I don't you know there's nothing else to be said about Nunes um, he he he's not he cannot be counted on yeah he cannot be counted on 